So, hello everybody. Um, this is Marta Gonzalez Lloret from the University of Hawaii Manoa. Uh, a lot of what we are going to see now is actually a reinforcement of uh, the presentation that just we just heard from Yao. So many of the things uh, will sound familiar, hopefully. And um, if you have any questions, feel, uh, feel free to uh, write on the chat. All right, so we're going to focus on assessing pragmatics. And Zhao has already given most of our examples on pragmatics. So um, a lot of this is going to look very, very familiar. We are going to look at what is the main purpose of assessing pragmatics, what exactly is that we should assess, how do we go about doing it, and then how do we use rubrics, which is what we have seen most now, and also how do we make sure that actually our students are developing their second language pragmatics. So the main purpose of our assessment, and Yao has pointed this to, can either be formative or summative, right? So formative assessment, it's basically to help uh, students and teachers both to uh, identify how students are doing, what their progress is, where their weaknesses uh, are still there and uh, be able to do something about it. And formative can happen during the semester at different points, usually low stakes, there's uh, not even a grade attached to it necessarily. While summative usually happens at the end and is trying to evaluate the student's learning on some, some point. And uh, it's usually high stakes because the students receive a grade and does the course grade, or it can be even higher stakes. And many times we actually don't even provide feedback at this point. The students just take a final exam, move on, and we, um, they never really even see this uh, last uh, part of their assessment. And project-based learning, of course, is different, and we're going to be talking about that. All right, so what is exactly that we should assess if we are assessing pragmatics? This is a big question, but um, although you may not like the answer, the answer is depends. Depends on your student level, depends on your project, depends on the focus, depends on multiple things. But it can vary from something very basic. If you have, for example, low level uh, learners, um, we are beginners and they don't know a lot of the language yet, they're still engaged in projects, which uh, you could actually assess something as simple as their metapragmatic knowledge. That is, do they actually understand what is done in the target culture or cultures, and how, um, what does it mean when people, for example, in a greeting, when people kiss, and is it normal to kiss? How many kisses do you give? Uh, all of those things. And just whether they understand it. So we don't need any production from them, just what we call metapragmatic knowledge, knowledge about it. We could um, ask students to, um, we could try to see whether students understand body language during an interaction and whether they can actually um, mimic that body language and reproduce it. We can focus on one speech act, such as a greeting or a farewell or an apology, and assess the students just on that speech act. We could look at one pragmatic uh, feature, such as politeness. So again, receptively, whether students understand the level of politeness that is produced by other speakers, or productively whether they can produce themselves the correct level of politeness in um, a certain conversation or speech act. We could, of course, as the students um, are more advanced, include different multiple speech acts, multiple features, and uh, we could actually focus on interaction, which is a little bit more difficult than 
uh, just looking at discrete uh, speech acts and we could um, target in our assessment whether they are actually uh, interactionally competent and we'll see what that, that means. And um, we can also assess them on the appropriateness of the entire interaction. So that's their interactional competence, plus how they're doing their speech acts, plus how they are using embodiment, plus whether they actually understand what they are doing. Okay, so how do we assess whatever it is that we want to assess? Traditionally, in L2 pragmatics, the way that people look at whether someone understands or is able to use pragmatics has been through what's called pragmatic judgment and DCTs, which are discourse completion tests, as well as role plays. So pragmatic judgments and DCTs have been used mainly to assess pragmatic knowledge, whether they actually understand what is going on, while role plays have been used to see whether students have the ability to actually add uh, certain pragmatic features. And methodologies um, that are more current like task-based language teaching or project-based, which is what occupies us now, have been looking more at performance-based testing. All right, so what does pragmatic judgment look like? Very much, um, it's what it sounds like. It's to judge whether something is pragmatic, appropriate, or not. So for example, uh, students can watch a video or they could listen to a sentence or they can read something in written form and they would then have to judge whether this was an appropriate um, speech act or an appropriate way of behaving. So in this ca uh, case, for example, uh, for more advanced students, we could ask them to watch this video and actually comment on whether this um, greeting was appropriate or not and why. If uh, we have uh, students with a lower language level, that is fine. It can also be done. Uh, we can adjust this pragmatic judgment test by changing it to the L1, because what we want to know is whether they actually understand the rules and the social norms. So it's okay that they tell us in their L1, or um, we can add more visual aids if we wanted to make it um, easier. An example for a lower language level, beginner level, could be to decide whether these statements are true or false. So we would ask in Spanish speaking countries, do women friends greet each other with a kiss in the cheek, true or false? Do males in a business setting greet each other with a kiss? Uh, a man and a woman that are friends, do they greet each other by kissing on the cheek? And then if this is done in the student's L1, you can imagine that we're actually just uh, targeting whether they know the knowledge and not even the language. All right, DCTs, Discourse Completion Test, is also what it sounds like. It's a discourse that is incomplete few sentences that are incomplete and we ask the students to complete those sentences with what they would say in that situation. Usually the situations are in written form, but they could be video or audio too. And we just ask the students to place themselves in the shoes of the person talking here and what they would say. So you are on the bus and a step on an older lady sitting in front of you and you say one of these. Students would have to actually choose uh, what they would say. And um, sometimes the DCTs also ask the students, how sure are you of your answer, for example? So that we know if the students are guessing or they're just not too sure and this would um, actually help us if this type of assessment is formative to focus on certain um, pragmatic features. 
Um, again, the level can be adjusted by using the L1 or the L2, by using uh, visual aids to include more or less element, to make the elements closer to each other or further away to each other, etc. The uh, traditional way of assessing how students can perform a pragmatic act or a pragmatic feature are usually role plays. And I think everybody understands role plays um, to uh, people, sometimes the teacher and a student, sometimes several of the students uh, put themselves in a situation and they have to talk and basically recreate that situation. They can also be uh, more or less difficult and this can be adjusted by adjusting the roles, the numbers of participants, the context. If it is more familiar to students, it's easier. If it's a context where they're not familiar, then it is more difficult. Uh, the specificity of the context, the more specific the context is, the less the students have to imagine and the easier it gets. The amount of it interaction that it requires. You can imagine that just a greeting is a lot easier than apologizing to a co-worker because you made her cry. Um, and also, you know, how many speech acts are involved, the time that you give the students, the planning time, or uh, whether you give a student planning time to do it or they just have to impromptu, no, impromptu totally <laughs> um, start that uh, role play. Yeah. If we move into project-based uh, or in task-based language teaching, um, usually we want to be able to see whether students can use the pragmatics that we are um, uh, teaching through the project really on the situation. So how well can actually students use the pragmatic knowledge, and the keyword here is use the pragmatic knowledge during the projects themselves. So we are assessing the students while they are doing the project. And how do we do that? Well, as um, Zhao has a very in detail, uh, in her talk explain rubrics is one of the best ways to do that and i'm going to show you a few examples and um, they're very similar to hers in a way um, in this case for example i could divide my rubric into um, the language that i would like the students to be able to perform the interactivity that i would like the students to be able to do and also the behavior that I want the students to be able to um, perform. So in the language, I would be focusing in the appropriate use of the language that they need to do. So whether they are using conditionals, if they have to in English, for example, if they're asking um, a request, are they doing can I? or could I, do you mind if I? So that would just target the language per se, while interactivity would look at how students are taking turns, whether they're overlapping uh, with their interlocutor, where they have enough silence for their interlocutor to talk, whether they can manage the topic, and also how is their embodiment, how is their behavior, their gaze, are they looking at their eyes if they're supposed to or are they looking at their eyes but they are not supposed to? And the same with gesture, gaze, distance. You can imagine that this is very different for uh, each language. And I pointed at the gaze as one of the very obvious uh, differences in many cultures and for many languages. Sometimes we look at people at their eyes when they speak. In some cultures this is not appropriate and you're not supposed to look at people in the eyes. So these of course would have to be targeted totally to the language of the um, participants of the students uh, and the culture because um, we would have to decide for our project 
which culture pragmatics are we teaching our students? So um, in one of the first talks that we had, someone asked, well, you know, my students are learning Russian, but really the only uh, Russian that they can interact with is the, the culture around us in our neighborhood. Well, then maybe we have to adapt to the pragmatics of that culture, of that community of language, rather than the abstract um, L2 uh, language. Uh, language uh, rubric that could be a little bit more detailed uh, could include, as uh, Yao has pointed out, it's much more informative and it is much more productive for students whether to know if they are able to uh, do question formation correctly, whether they can use their verb forms correctly, their sentence structure. So these would um, give us the criteria that students can actually work on and the teachers can actually work on um, to improve their um, language. So how do we know if students are actually learning, if they're developing their pragmatic competence? Because this is actually a competence, it's not just knowledge. As we saw before, we can see whether students actually have pragmatic knowledge, but we may want to move forward and look at whether they also um, know how to um, implement this knowledge. So um, what is exactly uh, that we are targeting, that we are assessing from our students? What is exactly that we are looking at whether students learn? Just the pragmatic knowledge, whether they have pragmatic awareness, that is, do they understand that things are different in different languages and that there are very uh, uh, specific differences between L1 and the L2, and we're just focusing on those. Uh, do they have receptive pragmatic skills? Are they understanding when people are um, just hinting something at them, giving them an indirect type of a speech act, for example? Um, implicature is one of those things that are really difficult for our students to learn. So if we have advanced students, the, we may want to assess whether they're able to extract implicature from um, the speakers. And also, um, are they able to produce uh, pragmatic either speech acts, interaction, et cetera. How do we know whether they're learning? Well, a good way to look at it is whether uh, did they know it before the project or were they able to do it before the project and are they able to do it after the project? These would um, tell us whether they are able, they have learned L2 pragmatics. Sometimes it's not as easy as that, but we can obtain good information uh, for us at whether you know we need to adjust our project and whether there was some learning on some parts of the pragmatics teaching. So we could just uh, look at the results of our students and um, you know, if six out of 10 students were able to do embodiment appropriately, you know, maintain the gaze, uh, place their body correctly, use the nodding of the head, etc. Well, not so good for us. So maybe we need to implement new materials, review our materials, use more visuals, um, et cetera. If uh, three out of 10 students met our expectations for topic management, well, that's not good at all. So we probably have to modify our uh, materials or um, teach more explicitly, focus on, on pragmatics and give more specific metapragmatic content on that or explanation. And uh, of course, as it has mentioned at the end of Yao's presentation also, it's always important to evaluate, improve, re-implement, and re-evaluate. And I think this can be done really at each step um, of the process. Every time we do an assessment, 
we should reflect whether the assessment uh, was good or not. Doesn't mean we are gonna change every single rubric on the students. I agree that constant for students is it's good, but if it is not working, then we should do something about it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. But if it is broken, then we need to do something about it. And definitely for the next project, even if the project is different, we can evaluate whether the type of rubrics that we use, whether we assess uh, was enough or too much, or it did not take us where we wanted, is definitely a good way to improve our next project, even if the project is different. And definitely um, having a student's input is extremely, extremely valuable. And I think even um, after we share a rubric with the students, it would be very interesting to have a student's comments on how do they think that really that rubric reflected what they think they know about um, pragmatics. And that's it for me. Thank you.